Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is part 7 of my quest system tutorial and in this part I will just go over and fix some bug and this bug maybe you have already yeah, noticed that I'm gonna try to demonstrate that pretty quick I want to explain what is actually happening and what I want to happen so the problem is um, then when we are going to talk to our NPC guy over here uh, it might lag a bit because my computer is working hard today. Uh, when I click the, this button the first time, whenever I start the scene or whenever I start the game, the problem is when I just click that, I also want the accept button to appear under that. But as you can see currently, it just does not show it. The problem is um, because uh, the kind or the, the art, I was setting this one up. Usually this button the accept button in our uh let's see in our quest description there is a game object and in there there is an accept button but this button is not um yeah is not available for us at the moment but usually when we are clicking that button the first time it should also automatically set the accept button to be to be active like it is right now so the problem is um is because i am setting all of that stuff in every button i create and i want to change this back so not the button is handling that on its own but the user interface manager so we have only one instance um of game objects or one instance of um whoever is going to check if that accept button is going to be acceptable or not or actually visible or not and that's what we are going to go over and fix today the same can happen also with the give up button and the complete button it doesn't really matter uh, because all of that three buttons have the same problem at the moment and we are going to fix that in just a second so at first go and open up the Q button script and the quest UI manager script because we need to shovel around some data from one piece to another or one script to another. So what are we going to do at the moment? Every Q button or actually any quest button is going to do the same process. It's going to have a private instance of any accept button, give up button, complete button. At start we are going to um, press all of that or actually um, um, make sure that we are able to use them and then we are going to set them active to be false and this is going to happen for all buttons uh, which are containing or actually using the Q button script and that's what we want to, to get rid of um, because this is going to be cause trouble so the first thing is we're gonna go over and uh, copy and paste or actually drag over or whatever call it whatever you want the so will start function in here we also need the access to the Q button scripts of course so we pass all that data we have in here into the quest user interface manager script so we're gonna go over and take that and copy it go to the quest manager object and then I go after the quest log infos and pass over the stuff and copy that in here since quest user interface manager does not have any start function we don't interfere with anything else in there um, and since we also took over the quest button script or queue button scripts for our actual buttons in here we don't have any problems um, because we cannot yeah basically we couldn't actually yeah instantiate anything or actually yeah get the instance or the information from that buttons what we don't need to copy is the buttons itself because in the quest user interface manager they are in already and now what we can do is we can actually um yeah delete all that stuff in here or toggle that um out but what you can also see is once we are toggling that stuff away we can see um in our show all infos function we have the no accept button script um which we can pass over the id to the quest id um or actually we can pa cannot pass over the quest id from the button we are on into the accept button script because we don't have the access to it because we just got rid of it what we do is instead uh we take the um information directly from the quest user interface manager so what we do is we're gonna leave a space in here now we can say the quest UI manager dot UI manager and in here we have that instance 
the accept button script. So if this is not the case, then we need to make sure that those things are not private but public. So we can access them. So we go over to our Q button, uh, to our Q uh, quest user interface manager and make them public instead. So public in here, public in there, and public in here. So with uh, setting this guys uh, to be public, I'm gonna save the quest user interface manager. You can see I automatically get access to the accept button script and its quest ID and can set this directly here to the quest ID. Or actually, yeah, visa versa. I can go over and take this quest ID from this queue button and pass this over into the access, uh, accept button script um, quest ID, which is currently sitting on the quest user interface manager. So now we can repeat this step for all the other things. So I just go over and copy this part in here and paste this over here and over there. And the same is going to be, uh, ha or it's going to happen to the accept button. Because those game objects in here are not available for us or actually not used by us. So we also pass over um, those informations. And as you can see, we also need to make them public. Otherwise, we don't have access to it. Or we could also create a function for this, but I believe it is better, better to use it um, as we do here. And another part in here is also where once we are starting to make those things public, we could basically get rid of that. But the problem is, if we are going to get rid of that, we might not be able to disable and enable them, or actually enabling or re-enabling them later on. So uh, at first, let's take it as it is and copy all the set stuff in here, and copy all over there where the red. Um, yeah, question or the, the red text is. And now we have directly access to the Q Quest User Interface Manager and all its components. Um, and now we should be able to test this one out. So I go over and uh, save both scripts because I have updated both of them. Now let's see if there is any error after it's compiling the whole stuff around. Maybe we get another reference later on or in just a second because we might take and drag uh, that three buttons directly into the quest user interface manager object. We will see that in just a second. So when we are going over here and talking to that guy and pressing on that button, you can see now it is already acceptable or instantly acceptable. So when I now accept that and talk to that guy once again, there are no quests available. I don't know where I have another guy. So let's go out and go in, talk to this guy once again. And nothing is happening. I don't know what the quest was. So let's see. Go get your reward, but I believe this NPC character in here cannot take back my quest. So let's see. Uh, receivable quests. Um, yeah, and I want the quest ID 1 to be receivable. So I'm gonna change that, of course. Go to that guy once again. I accept the quest. Oh, going in, and now I can see I should be able to. Talk to this guy once again, it's now in here, and of course the complete button is also accessible. Same for the give up one, when we would be able, or actually when we would like to give up that quest. But we can only give up a quest when we have not completed it, that's how we programmed that. Um, so we're gonna take this go in here, see the accept button is already accessible and same for the give up button. Ah, uh, let's see. Okay, there's one more problem. It is not going to be yeah, disabled when we have not clicked any quest because it's going to stay acceptable or actually that accept button is going to stay um, active. And that's what we also want to take care of. So. 
Uh, let's see where we can do that. Basically, it's the same stuff. It also is in here. So in the close panel. So when we are closing the panel, no matter how we are going to close that panel, uh, we also want to make sure that all the buttons are disabled. So how can we do that once again? We just take that three lines in here. We copy this one over where we say the accept button, the complete button and the give up button is going to, or are going to get set to be false. But as you can see, they are not accessible because we need to say quest UI manager dot UI manager dot um, accept button, give up button and complete button needs to be set to false. I'm gonna save. So we hide all the panel, or the, actually the quest panel, when we are closing the panel, no matter how we do that. Uh, I will double check that in just a second, if it also is when we are pressing the correct button for this. But I believe so. So uh, when we are going back in here and it's done compiling, we're going to go over and check this one once again. So when we are going to this guy in here, we took talk to him once now the accept button is uh, completed when I now press space again uh, it says uh, no quest available that's funny oh no it says uh, boss it say uh, yeah that, then I needs to be some fix later on too but when we're closing that button you can see the accept button is also gone um, and is going to get um, yeah disabled when we're pressing the close button for our quest so um, yeah, that's pretty much for the fix. For the space button, it shouldn't be too hard to block space button hits when we have opened our yeah or, uh, one of our panels. Basically, what we want to do is uh, we would just uh, to block the space input. We would check if um, the quest uh, or if there is any panel open at the moment, or actually the quest panel is open. Same for the quest lock panel, of course. Um, if this is a, yeah, since uh, this is going to be a public bool, we should be able to just easily access this. So, um, but those are not public, those are private ones. So, might we go over um, and set this one to public. So, when I say this is going to be a public bool in here, I'm gonna save that in the Quest User Interface Manager. And um, we just want to read the data basically. So, uh, what we want to do is we want to check if the quest user interface manager dot UI manager dot um, and in here we have that quest panel active. So if the quest panel active is uh, true, so if it's true or actually in this case we want that not to be true, um, then we want to go and do all the things in here like checking for quests. And the checking for quest is also automatically opening up the quest log panel and the quest panel, uh, no, it's just a quest panel, not the quest log panel. So if we go and press play and talk to that guy and talk to that guy once again while we are in our um, thingy in our, uh, while we are talking with that guy already and this one is opened because um, we just set this one to open as you can see here, quest panel active. So while the quest panel is active, we cannot talk to that guy once again. So we don't get another debug line in here for like, hey, there are no quests available or anything else. But when we're closing this one, also uh, quest panel active is going to be false. So we can talk to this guy once again. So that's for the second fix. I believe uh, there might be some small issues later on. You can also go over and blend in some um, text when we are close to that guy. Um, and that's pretty much everything for the quest. Uh, um, yeah, system. Thanks for watching the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Sum this video up if you like it and feel free to become my patron or donate by using PayPal to support me and my channel in the future. All links will be below in the description. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.